Yeah. Hello, boys and girls. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I come to you this day. Thank you for the day that you've given us. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence tonight and be able to dive into your word and learn. I pray that you undertake that we're listening and paying attention so that we can receive your word and go out into the world and utilize it to witness and be in your light in the world, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray again. Thanks. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome back to another ALBM Saturday Night Bible Class. We're happy to have you guys here with us today and glad you decided to join us. My name is Sister Liz. I will be reviewing the books of the Bible, followed by Sister Citra with the memory verse and Brother Covian with the lesson. Before we begin, let's make sure you have your Bibles in hand and that you're prepared your mind and your heart to receive God's word. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, then Ezekiel, and then Daniel, Jose, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Hey guy, Zechariah, Malachi, that's Hey guy, Zechariah, Malachi. All right, young people, today's book of the Bible review is on the book of Micah. The book of Micah was written by the prophet Micah. It was written around 735 to 710 B.C., and prophecies come true in this time period from 722 to BC to the future. There are no famous stories in the book of Micah, but it does contain famous scriptures about the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. Let's look at the famous verses. The first verse comes from Micah 5 2, and it reads But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, thou, Though thou be little among the thousands of Praise Judah. Praise the Lord, young people. I'm Sister Citra. Tonight I'll be bringing you the memory verse portion of our lesson. Uh, tonight's memory verse will be coming from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. And we'll be getting some folks to help us out with saying the verse tonight. All right. I think Sianna's up first. Sianna. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. CJ, you're up next. Proverbs 3, 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Amen. All right. One more time. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Everyone, I want to thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And I also want to thank... CJ and Sienna for sending me those voice recordings so I can use those for tonight. Just wanted to do something a little different for you. Um, but we thank you so much for chipping in to help with bringing forth God's word. And everyone, please uh, be prepared for Brother Covian as he brings the word. Thank you. Praise the Lord, ALBM saints and boys and girls all in attendance tonight uh, listening to this message. We resume this week with getting into our messages about Samuel and um, this lesson that we're doing tonight, the boy Samuel comes from 1 Samuel chapter 1 and then chapter 2 verses 18 through 21 and then verse 26. Of course, we won't touch on every scripture for time's sake, but please make sure you take the time to read uh, what, God word, what God's word says about this area of scripture. Um, so as we get into the lesson, let's before we get into the lesson, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come to you thanking you for this time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for another opportunity to serve you and to listen to what you have to say to Heavenly Father. Lord, I don't want to be seen at all. I just ask that I be hidden behind the cross and that what you give me to say uh, is shared through you and that it benefits the lives of all who hear this message. So we just what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. We begin this story talking about Hannah. And uh, Hannah was the wife of Elkanah. And uh, Hannah 
couldn't have children. Uh, the Bible tells you in First uh, Samuel chapter one that the Lord had shut up her womb, but she really wanted to have a baby, um, and she she wanted a, a son um, so badly that uh, she was unhappy about not being able to have a kid. Um, and then some of the women, you know, they mocked her and they made fun of her for not having a kid, and it would make her very sad. Um, to, to the point where she would even cry because of how bad she wanted to have a child. So Hannah um, eventually makes a prayer and a vow to God. She goes and she prays and she says um, that, you know, if she has a, a, a child and she's going to dedicate this child to the Lord. If she has a child, if God allows her to have a baby, she's going to dedicate the Lord. And when she went to the temple to pray this prayer, a gentleman by the name of Eli heard her pray the prayer. And um, again, this was what she wanted to do. She vowed it. She wanted a kid so bad. She said, God, if you give me one, she said, I am going to dedicate that child to you. Um, verse 17 said, then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. So after he heard what she said, she wasn't praying it to him, but he heard her. And because he heard her, he said he, he wanted to talk to her. He had a conversation with her. And he prayed that God would grant her what she requested. Um, so sometime later, Hannah did, she conceived, she and, uh, Elkanah, they had a baby and she named her child um, Samuel and she called him Samuel because Samuel means literally asked of God. So she had a baby and she named her baby Samuel, literally God. And um, she loved him very much, but she didn't forget what she promised to God. She remembered what she done. She remembered what she said. She said, I have promised that I would dedicate this child to God. So as soon as he was old enough, she left home to, to leave home. She took him back to the temple. And um, when she took him back to the temple, um, she walked over there and she talked to Eli. She asked Eli, did he remember who she was? He said, remember, I was the woman who had prayed for a child. And this is the boy that God gave me. And she says to him, now I'm giving him back to God. Just like she said, this is what she was going to do. He's a young boy. He's a child at this point, a kid who she's given to God to serve God. Now, I didn't say this earlier and I should have, but I'm saying it now. Our, the objective or the aim to teach in this lesson is was that we can work for Jesus when we are young. And this is very important to you young people today. I'm going to tell you why in a few minutes. I'm going to go into the story a little bit. We can work for Jesus when we are young. Okay? Keep that in the back of your mind as we go uh, through the story. So Samuel was born, right? His mom remembered the promise that she made because she said, God, if you give me a kid, I'm going to dedicate him back to you. So he does that. He gets older. She takes him to the temple and dedicates him right back to the Lord. Um, verse 24 says, and when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him into the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Uh, verse 26, and she said, O oh, my Lord, as thou so liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here praying unto the Lord. So speaking to Eli. Verse 27, for this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth, he shall the Lord, and he worship the Lord there. So Hannah has left her baby there to worship the Lord. Now, let's, here's a question. At What can you do where you are today at your age, a young person? What can you do right now where you are to work, work for the Lord and to be a child of God and to benefit the kingdom of God where you are right now. I said earlier that this was very important today because of the times that we are in. You know, um, we're in a time now where we need more young people to step up, more people to step up as um, as Christians in, in, in your age group, in your environment right now, and be a light to a very dark world. You can do that right now. How do you do it? You can only do it on God's strength. You have to really get in your word. You have to read and you have to study so that God can help you become someone who can benefit his kingdom today right where you are. What's our objective again? It's telling us we can work for Jesus when we are young. Now, 
Did Samuel want to work for Jesus? He probably did because this is the way his mother brought him up. His mother brought him up in a way that said, this is what we, what, what you can do with your life. You go and worship the Lord. So this is all he knew. All he knew was worshiping and living with God. And that's what he did. We go over to verses uh, 18 and let's start at verse 18. And it says, but Samuel ministered before the Lord being a child, girded with a, li a linen ephod. Verse 19, moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Verse 20, and Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, the Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived and bare three sons. Remember, she, she said first. And now she had three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. So because Samuel was away and he was away doing the Lord's work, he again, verse that the Bible tells us that he worked and ministered before the Lord. He was away doing that. And God said, you know what? Because you did that. Remember her womb was set up, shut up and she couldn't have, have kids. Now she's got three sons and she's got two daughters, all because she made the decision to give young Samuel to the Lord. And Samuel spent his time working for the Lord. You can work for the Lord, young people, right where you are today. And again, it's very important. We are in times now where people need to know, especially our young people, need to know who Jesus is. There are decisions that need to be uh, made now by a lot of people who need to decide if they're going to choose to follow Christ or not follow Christ. We're in those times where that decision needs to be made because he's coming back. So when he comes back, we don't want any of our friends. We don't want our family. We don't want anybody to be lost. So where you are right now, it's important that you're working for the Lord and that you're willing to stand strong, that you're willing to stand with confidence and tell your friends how to get saved and how they can know Jesus because you don't want them to be lost. That's a uh, something that I think about often is how terrible I would feel to be going to heaven and so many friends that I should have told that I did not tell. So I find it very important today to get that message out there. So I'm praying that even you, that you begin to see the urgency and the importance to share Christ with your friends where you are right now. What environments are you in where you know that you have friends and you have people who need to know who Jesus is? I'm praying that you are willing and that God gives you the strength, the courage, and the confidence to share Tell your friends who Jesus is so that they can have an opportunity to say yes to Jesus. You can't control whether they say yes or not. They might say no, but your job is to let your light shine and then share with them. And we can all be praying together that they do say yes to Jesus. Amen. All right. As we continue, um, I want to talk about something very, very important. Um, we have so much going on in our world right now and, uh, we just uh, had a message of uh, people who are listening to what Jesus has to say, who are sitting at his feet, um, you know, uh, his disciples, his children, people who know him and people who are getting to know him and hopefully saying yes to Jesus Christ. Um, but what if you haven't said yes to Jesus Christ yet? How do you establish a personal relationship with him? How do you know that when you leave this earth that you're going to go to heaven? Um, there's so many people afraid right now because of this pandemic that we have going on. Um, school has been canceled. Businesses are closed. People are stuck in their houses and uh, everybody's panicking. And uh, some, well, some people are panicking, not everybody, but some people are panicking because they're like, what's going on? You know, like, what do I do next? And they're afraid. But for the believer, um, these should be exciting times for us because I believe that God has once again slowed everything down so that we can all get our focus back on him. And this is also an opportunity for us to tell people about Jesus and how they can get to know him. So we'll talk about the way to heaven. Okay. Why did God give his son? It's because he loved the world so much. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus, be, Jesus came to the world. The Word became flesh. He lived. He died. And he did that for us so that we could be saved. That's why he gave his Son. He loved us so much. He didn't want us to die and go to hell. He wanted us to be with him. 
So then you may ask, well, well, why do I need Jesus? What is my need for Jesus? Why do I need him? We need Jesus because we have sinned. I have sinned. Sometimes we sin by getting into fights. So many other things that we do. We disobey our parents. Um, um, our sin brings sadness. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, uh, Romans uh, 3.23 says. That's why we need Jesus, because we have sinned. Sin separates us from the love of God. There's a penalty for sin. If we don't accept Jesus, there's a penalty for sin. Sin must be punished. Read this line right here. Sin must be punished. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's found in Revelations 20.15. And it says again, for the wages of sin is death. But, and thank God for this word, but right here, B-U-T. But <laughs> the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 is where that scripture is found. Okay? So what did Jesus do for you? What did Jesus do for me? He was punished in my place. He was punished in your place. Okay? He is not still dead. He is alive and he's in heaven. He took the punishment for our sins. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 to 4, pardoned for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? So what do I need to do? How do I accept this gift? How do I become a member of God's family? How does my name get written in the Lamb's Book of Life? How do I know that when he returns, I will be with him? Okay? For again, for the wages of sin is death. But, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He gives us a gift. The gift of God is to receive Jesus Christ, to accept salvation from Jesus Christ. That is how we establish it. That's how that is how we establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. But as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That is found in John chapter one, verse 12. Okay, so we must receive God's gift. Do you want to receive God's gift today? Do you want to receive his gift? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, says Romans 10, 13. So there's a prayer that we need to pray if we want to be in the family of God. It's a very simple prayer that if we pray it and we mean it, we immediately be born into the family of God. And that prayer reads, and if you want to just pray it right now, you can bow your head, close your eyes right where you are, and just say this prayer right along with me. You can say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart today. Come into my heart and life and save me. Help me to live for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, what you need to do now is uh, reach out to, you have just been born into the family of God, first of all. And now what you need to do is reach out to, um, you know, your, your spiritual leaders here at the Abundant Life Bible Mission, uh, the leadership in this group. Um, you know, you can reach out now and we'll tell you how to become a disciple, how to build that relationship with Jesus Christ and continue to grow in his faith and grow in his love. And next thing you know, you'll be telling your friends about Jesus. You'll be telling other people how they can be saved and how they can have a relationship with God. And that is the most important thing, especially during these times right now. We don't know when the Lord is going to return, but a lot of biblical prophecy is being fulfilled right now with everything that's going on. It is being fulfilled and the Lord is coming back soon to take us where? To take us to heaven. So what you just learned was how to get there. And the way to get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for again for this time. Thank you for this class. Thank you for this message. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the opportunity to still um, get online and share with the children. We ask that you to keep them engaged, keep them focused, help them to build upon what you have started teaching them, help them to draw closer and closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen.